The Sonic Movie Show is a weekly podcast that you could find on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other services like YouTube. Just search for The Sonic Movie Show and give us a like wherever you listen. Welcome, friends, to episode 34 of The Sonic Movie Show, the only show that's about Sonic news, movie news, and the occasional Sonic movie news. My name is Ethan, and with me here today is Devin. I think that tank just had a baby. It's true. Uh, And that quote was from the Sonic movie, which is actually in news today, which is crazy. I say sometimes Sonic movie news is a joke, but today it's actual Sonic movie news. Uh, Breaking news, like literally an hour before we We were going to do something else for today's episode, but it's Sonic movie news time. Why don't you hit me off? Tell me what's going on. Well, guess what? I'm sure we will rejoice because at least uh, our name will (laughs) make more sense uh down the road here but sonic the hedgehog the movie is getting a sequel confirmed by variety confirmed by all your favorite uh sonic outlets it's coming baby yes uh yeah it's the the thing we expected is happening and the people that are making it are the ones we expected um jeff fowler is coming back to direct the same writers are on as before Uh, no confirmed for casting, but it's going to be the same, at least the same two. I don't know if they'll like, you bring can't back repl- James Marsden, I mean, but yeah. they're not going to replace Ben Schwartz. And Robotnik is going to be in the film, so we're going to see Jim Carrey. Yeah, I mean, we expected this, right? Yeah. How- I mean, it, well, not at first. When we first started doing the show, I don't think we ever thought about... <laughs> that wasn't even yes. in our brain, the idea of like, oh, there's going to be a sequel to this catastrophe. I don't even think it was in our brain that we would continue the podcast after the movie came out. So <laughs> true. This is true. This is truly a, a 2020 dark universe. But um, my question to you, though, mm. uh, seeing as how you like movies more than me, I actually detest movies in general. I'm just here for the Sonic. No. <laughs> how far away has the announcement of the sequel been from the film coming out? in relation to other successful movies that first start their ventures, if that makes sense. I mean, we got, I feel like we got into the spider versus sequel announced like pretty quickly after. Right. I mean, was it cause this was, uh, cause the movie ended. Well, I guess technically hasn't gone through theaters in like China and stuff yet because of the coronavirus. Um, Mm -hmm. which I keep forgetting that like that hasn't been like, it actually still hasn't finished its run, which is actually incredible of all the money it made considering that, um, yeah, and but, the Oscars don't want to uh, acknowledge it. That's why they're delaying themselves. <laughs> they can't acknowledge the f- that this movie is Oscar worthy. Uh, no, but uh, so what? It came out February fourteenth, uh, Valentine's Day, Who and now forget? it is. It only like only three months roughly have passed, a little over three months, and we already didn't get announced a sequel. I mean, that's I mean, they must have they must have gotten enough money. I mean, they did get a lot of money, but it must have gotten like such a positive feedback they're like oh we have to do a sequel you know what i mean uh but compared to other movies i mean we already knew like with iron man all that like one would i would i don't have the timeline in front of me but i would would imagine that like once iron man was successful like oh yeah we gotta make a sequel you know what i mean um yeah well i mean but then i look at detective pikachu and there has there been any sources that have said that like we're making another pokemon movie or even they did, they? Yeah, they said they're making a sequel for sure. Um, yeah, it was after uh, I mean, how long the movie after? had come out, and they had said, oh, it was a big success. Um, they said that they they first announced that they are bringing the game itself that it's based off of, the 3DS Detective Pikachu, to Switch in some remake or, or sequel or something. And they said, yes, we're making a sequel to the actual film itself. Um, that's been announced. That's on the docket. No, I, did, I must have missed that's like, that. That's um, like a 2022 kind of a thing. Gotcha. 2023, maybe. I, well, sh- I, I, I would I'm guess assuming now 23, but I was trying because like, that's the only thing we can really compare it to. Like, I mean, yeah, you can compare it to a Marvel movie or a DC movie because it is kind of like a, a nerdy thing uh, in a way. Even though I would say Marvel and DC isn't considered like it's nerdy, but like. But it occupies the same family friendly, yeah, uh, type of sphere. I was, I was going to say more that risky. like Avengers is like the average person likes Avengers now. It isn't like a niche 
thing where I'm right. like, yeah, right. I'm a Marvel yep. fan. Like everyone, if you go to anybody right now, I'm like, oh, do you like Marvel? Yeah, I like Marvel. I like Spider-Man. Now the gatekeeping can begin. Now the gatekeeping can begin. <laughs> when? <laughs> <laughs> when did your favorite? You like? Iron Man? No, it's not. <laughs> Sheep. Yeah. <laughs> People, but, uh, are, people are going to quiz each other about uh, what their favorite Sonic game is. Be like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I can't wait for that. Uh, I'm still waiting for us to be one day. I, get, I feel like that's the point of no know, of knowing when we made it is whether or not we have someone like on Twitter who just shits on hates, us being like, 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 you didn't even play all the Sonic games. Yeah. You call yourselves Sonic fans. Uh, anyways, but uh, by choice, I guess that's what I would put it in the same. I feel like that's a. I feel like it's pretty normal for the turnaround to be like, yeah, this is a sequel coming out in terms of the news. That's what it feels like. It doesn't feel like it's like, oh, wow, this is super early or this is super late. I mean, the movie was a success compared to other animated, uh, or not just animated, but other video game movies. It's a success. It's one of the highest ones. I think it's like number three. It made over $300 and hasn't even been in China yet. Who knows if it might end up or not, but like this numbers alone not in China is pretty good. I'm pretty sure that Warcraft made most of its money in China. That was a big hit in China. And like and Sonic is not too far behind Warcraft. At and we don't have a sequel something. for that. That was 20 what 17? That was uh 16? 2016, yeah. Yeah. I mean it made just under 40 440 million. Yeah. I and mean yeah, eh. Yeah, so I guess we're just right where it, we would expect there to be a sequel. I mean, I don't think we – both of us didn't have any doubts that once we saw the movie and then saw how much money it made, we were like, okay, if they don't make a sequel, then they're stupid. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, there, there would have to be some actual reason other than – Like Jim Carrey comes out and he's like, well. I don't want to be part of this. They're not even that. They'd I mean, probably they still replace him. him. Yeah, or write yeah, him out. Make Shadow the villain or you know, Metal Sonic, something like uh, – who cares? It'd have to come out that like – Sonic is racist, which, by the way, that we tails need sweatshirt, Sonic. that tails sweatshirt that got pulled off the Sega store. That was really? a small story, yeah, because it had the imperial Japanese flag, and a bunch of uh, fans were upset, um... mostly South Korean, because they're like, "Hey, you know, Japan did these bad things. We forget about." <laughs> so they didn't vet the artists that they. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they weren't thinking of it though. But that's that's a whole other story. But yeah, um, interesting tales. Some yeah, even Sonic isn't safe. Uh, then he won't be in the sequel now. <laughs> I know they pulled him from the sequel. Uh, actually, that's what yeah. Variety says right here. Tails will not be in the sequel. <laughs> damn, damn. Yeah, I was really uh, looking forward to uh, Miles Tails per hour on the screen. <laughs> but spoilers, by the way, for anyone who hasn't seen the movie and just jumped into this, Tails is at are the you end listening of the movie? to this podcast? If you haven't seen the Sonic <laughs> movie, I mean, it's the 2020 film of the year, <laughs> and the true. Academy is scared of that. We'll have to do, uh, at the end of the year, we'll have to do our favorite movies list or something, I think. And obviously we'll have <laughs> to bend that it that out. Sonic always wins every award. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Best yeah. actor, Sonic himself. <laughs> Not I even mean, Ben Schwartz. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like any of our news episodes, we end up just talking about COVID a lot, but like, it could very easily not be any new movies until end of August. I mean, I, we'll right? get some through like Netflix yeah, or VOD stuff. Blo- like uh, Bloodshot was, where it's just going to come out digitally. Yeah. Like, is Tenet going to come out on time? Because they, they're really saying it's going to. They're not delaying There's it. There's no way they don't. Okay, let, okay, let's say we still want theaters by then. They'll delay it before they release it digitally, I think. I just, just based off that movie, Christopher Nolan, yeah. he's, he's, mean, he wants that in theaters, dude. Bloodshot, well, Bloodshot didn't have a choice. It already launched. But, like, Trolls is like, whatever. And clearly that worked out for them. But, like, No Time to Die? that They're not going to release it on, it's on Hulu Plus. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no. <laughs> Pay 20 bucks to see it now. Yeah. Maybe some, yeah, maybe no. it would, but, like, that's a movie I want to see in theaters. You know what I mean? There's, like, this movies that you want to see in theaters. Uh, yeah. But, uh. So, I'm excited for this Sonic sequel. Uh, it makes I our show we better. About- indirectly we can, we can all speculate you know we actually have sonic news sonic movie news um uh-huh. i know we speculate on what the sequel could be on a previous episode uh so we don't need to, to rehash all that kind of stuff but they could go in any direction and i'm sure they are right now the writers uh pat casey and josh miller are just 
brainstorming ideas. I'm sure they had ideas that they cut from the first movie. It was like, well, if the, if it's successful, maybe the sequel we can write it in because that that often happens. Like, I, like right? they might build the uh, the world more. The, yeah, the actual Sonic Sonic's actual cinematic world. universe because they uh, made sure that they jumped as soon as they could to <laughs> Earth because of fear of alienating families, I guess, or or people that haven't played the Sonic game. But yeah, um, I'm just glad though too that we have Jeff Fowler back. Like this was his first movie and he did it really well. That like. It's hard not to be like, oh boy, we get more from him. You know what I mean? Like, I'm excited. Like, I yeah, like to I see mean, these young. It, could, it would directors. feel like a betrayal if they're like, your first successful movie, you made us over three hundred million dollars. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> now we're gonna um, get I'm, in. But I'm uh... also glad that he wants to do it again. You know what I mean? Like, because there might be some guys True. who are like, no, I'm big now. I want to direct a Star Wars film. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so please save Star Wars. <laughs> please save Star Wars. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm trying to remember, is Pat Casey and Josh Miller, are they, were they originally on the first one or no? I believe so. Uh, uh, I'll have to double check that. But um, from what it sounds like, though, if everyone's on board again, like there's less, I, I'd be, I'm less worried that the second one would suck. You know what I mean? Uh, not that like it really would matter to us because we're going to cover it regardless. But uh, and of course, we want also to be good. Mean that they'll have a bigger budget, which means that they can afford bigger talent, like perhaps The Rock. Like, Dude, I if The Rock, was, okay, like I'm uh, saying it oh, right he here, he was kind of interested now in the film. You I'm know saying I mean? right here, right now, future Devin and Ethan. If we get The Rock in here, or <laughs> not in this show, but if we get The Rock in the Sonic sequel, like I will lose my mind, like. But I'm sure you we'll know, be like he, he's we'll be, be like ex- one by then people. though. In the future, we'll be like whatever, right? But like you say that, but anything is possible. Any, anything is timeline. possible. He's going to be one of two people. I guarantee this. He's either going to play himself, The Rock. Sonic's going to save The Rock at some point, he, maybe for a gag, or he's going to be Knuckles, <laughs> or he'll be the president. Because remember, he Sonic says, "Where am I? What year is it? Is The oh. Rock the president?" That would that would be funny. That'd be I funny mean, if they even he's but in it he for would like be playing five himself seconds. then. He would be playing himself then at, at that point. But that would be a funny gag. I think he could be a good Knuckles for sure. Uh, I'm just saying, if, I'll lose if my they're mind not going to do happens. the original voice cast. I don't know if it will happen, but because he's expensive, like you're going to put like at least 200 mil towards. They that They made man. two Jumanji movies with him. They made that those Rampage big movie budgets though. Him. I don't know because they have Jack Black, Kevin Hart. All those as well. Rampage, though. Rampage. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Rampage also made four point or four hundred and twenty-eight million dollars. Jesus Christ! <laughs> that is actually uh, third. Warcraft is second. Pikachu is one. Sonic is technically uh, not finished, and that's at fourth. So it'd be three. Um... Oh, we know uh, Prince of Persia is fourth. Whatever. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I will lose my mind if, like, a trailer comes out, like, six months from now, and The Rock's in it as Knuckles or any, like, in any sort of fashion. But then by then, we'll be so used to it. Damn. So We're not going to appreciate it. You know what I mean? We're not yeah. going to remember our days where we made 20 bullshit episodes just trying to string along the podcast <laughs> about a sonic movie before we finally i'm just glad we have a sequel sonic because movie. if we didn't have a sequel is it really a sonic movie show <laughs> eh, well we don't have to worry about that now don't we, huh? we, we t- yeah no one's <laughs> we don't need to worry about no that. one's mad at us so. <laughs> no but i mean well so then what year do you think it's gonna come out in that's a good question so, i honest to god when did they first announce 2023 i feel like that's a good guess because you got to remember with Corona, too, that's definitely going to... Everything got pushed. I think it could have easily been a 22, but with Corona, you can't film anyone right now. You know what I mean? Unless you, you just do means, voice you, lines. You, you can't do voice cast. You can't do casting calls. Uh, Unless you, you just can't. do all Sonic scenes. But that, that's got to be tough with, like... Let's say you get Jim Carrey, but all the Sonic scenes are already put in. Like, that just wouldn't make sense. You know what I mean? If anything, Sonic's probably added last. You shoot it, then you add Sonic. Oh, yeah. I mean, pre-production sure. that they can do. You know, you can, as a writer, you can, 
work from home and be like, and then I Sonic to went to an Earth, entire you know? year drafting the script, an entire perfect perfecting the Sonic sequel script. I want it to be called Sonic and Tails. I think that's like a shoe in for a name. And then you can name the third one Sonic and Knuckles. Sonic and Tails. <laughs> Chaos Emeralds. Um, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of plot points. We, again, we talked about our, our Sonic sequel predictions, but they can easily actually start to do some of the game stuff now that Sonic was a success. Yeah. They can feel a little bit safer to do yeah. things that aren't like family friendly film. It's May. But I, the theaters. Uh, I would agree with 2023. Maybe 2024. I know that. I don't know if they could wait that long, though. Because, like, that's part of the thing, too, is you don't want people to forget in a way. Like, not saying that people will. F- it's kind of hard to explain. I understand what you're saying, though. Like, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of films. There's a lot of, you know, entertainment properties being shoved at us from all different angles. Lots of franchises, series. People can be bored it's of it. It's easy for Sonic to get lost in the wind. Or people sure. can be bored and be like, you know, I don't like maybe better video game movies will come out or just better stuff will come out. And then, like you said, it'll be lost in the wind. They'll be like, oh, there's a Sonic 2. Oh, OK, I'll, I'll see that on Redbox. Sonic the Hedgehog might end up being like Spider-Man 2, where we were all like, this is amazing. It's the best uh, film of this type of medium ever. And then like 10 years later, we'll, you'll watch it again. You'll be like, ugh, ugh, ugh. I mean, I think that's just your opinion. I mean, yeah, I don't. I don't <laughs> Spider Man Two is a lot of mopey Peter Parker and terrible acting, but that's my opinion. I don't know. What do you think a Sonic movie has to do to reinvigorate audiences? I think uh, it needs to come out with. Assuming it comes out late, it comes out late. Because I was gonna say, I think it either has to come out twenty twenty two. You have to not. You have. There's that's the only pressure I think it has. Um, I think right now is that. It has to come out sooner rather than later. Uh, but, yeah, of course, coronavirus changes things. Just because, you know, things change. People's, people might get sick of video game movies in two years. Um, I think it's the biggest gamble in the film industry right now is video game movies because it could be a, the next comic book film type stuff. Yeah. But then you always have the consistent hitters with you just action, you know, like – the James Bond films, like they'll always are popular because they've been around for so long. You know what I mean? Tom so, Cruise, The Rock, uh, the Snyder Cut. Um, <laughs> God bless the Snyder Cut. Uh, but um, I feel like yeah, it needs to come out soon. I I think what they're doing with keeping the same group of people is important for consistency, uh, especially if they like wind up making more movies down the road. You want that to be cohesive and not feel like. This is a whole new Sonic. Like, I think what they did with this Sonic is good. Can it be improved a little bit? Sure. But there's nothing, like, bad. Like, I I think we've, we've covered the Sonic movie plenty of times now. Uh, but I, don't, I think we both can agree that, like, Sonic in the film isn't bad. Like, there's nothing bad about him. His design's good. Right. Ben Schwartz knocks it out of the park, in my opinion. If anything, now, like... That's what I think of when I hear Sonic. Is like, I'm like, I think of Ben Schwartz, uh, which shows how good of a job he's done. Uh, so I feel like... No, actually, it shows how bad of a Sonic fan you are if yeah, you don't I think Julie you White. need to bring Jim Carrey back. I think it would... Like, I know we I could write him out. I would be if he's not, but... Yeah. I think if, they, if you write him out, it just makes the first one not as rewatchable. Because I think that's important. If you want to make... If you want to, like, cement Sonic as, like especially in the movie sphere as like, Oh, these are good movies. You want people, you mm-hmm. want people to say that down the road being like, Oh yeah. The Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies are good. You know, you want people to have that general idea. The only way you can do that is if you're consistent. Uh, right. You know what I mean? Unlike star Wars, the latest star Wars, people have a bad taste of star Wars in the mouth. At least I do. Because I don't know if there's anyone that actually loves all three of the recent Star Wars films of that trilogy, you know? Maybe because likes, of what you're saying. not loves. You know what I mean? For sure. So I feel they're like I'm happy with it. <laughs> as long as they're consistent, uh, maybe expand the universe more, but those are all just my personal preference. But I just think those are the biggest things. Keep the, at least have the, the budget be around the same. I don't like, yeah, maybe they can get more for bigger name actors, but at the end of the day, I don't think it needs to be. What they did with that film is for the budget. I thought was really good. 
Granite, maybe more set pieces. Maybe make it a little bit more fast paced because there are some moments where I felt it was a little slow. But yeah. I, I think those are the biggest things. Keeping Jim Carrey because I think if you write him out, it would just it would just put a damper on it because I think that he is a crucial part of why that movie is fun. But and unfortunately, he, so is James Marsden, and I don't I, uh, see the my sequel thing. using him too much. If any, he might be in the beginning, and then we say goodbye to him. Yeah, because how much is he going to be involved with the plot? Why would Sonic still be hanging out because, with him? But I, but that could be fun though if you bring him back and be like, yeah, why would he I would be love hanging it. out with them? I if they take him to another planet, I'd be totally cool with that. Because I'm thinking of like Guardians of the Galaxy vibes with like exotic planetary exotic, locations. Yeah, and, and all of a sudden, just like James Marston, who's still like he's just dressed up as a cop. I just wanted to be dressed and up as a cop clueless. the entire time, and he's just like. <laughs> On Mars, or you could almost do it two different ways because Tails came to Earth in the the post credit scene. Spoilers, <laughs> uh, so Tails doesn't know anything about Earth. We imagine, so you could do that kind of fish out of water thing, and then they take James Marsden to another planet, and he's in a fish out of water thing. Then you can make callbacks to old jokes that he made about Tails. Tails, I think he was him. really good in that. Actually, like I really liked him a lot. And, and like it's that... just just like how you were saying with the same writers and director, you want to reward the people that were all in in the beginning, and he was. So why the hell would you kick him out? You know? Yeah. Obviously, he doesn't want to do it, or if there's scheduling conflicts, shit happens. But I would really like him to be in it. But I think out of all of them, Ben Schwartz needs to stay. And Jim Carrey needs to stay, in my opinion. Like, I feel like those two need to be in it. I would love James Marsden also to be in there, but I think you you can easily write him out more than Eggman. It'd be weird if, like, after the first movie you had Eggman, oh, he's definitely going to come back some way or another, and then, like, he's not there. Unless you have like a lot to come of back for a third film. do that film. thing where, you, like you just said, the the main villain isn't in the second one, so there's a new threat that tests our heroes convictions in different ways and they learn things about themselves and you know it seems like it's a bigger threat than the original villain but then the original villain comes back for the third and it's go time baby you know they could do that but like you said i they're missing out on a lot if they get rid of fucking Eggman. you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah because it's, like, it's like you really if they did a string is... of mario movies without bowser yeah i feel like uh to like the general public in terms of Sonic, I feel like they know Eggman before they would know who the hell Shadow is. They would just think, oh, bad Sonic. Like, they don't really know who Shadow is. I I guess it depends. I mean, like we've said, there are so many different types of Sonic fans and people that... Movie fans. Well, just people that have touched the Sonic franchise in different parts of its life, and it's radically different depending on the year or month even sometimes. So who knows? There could be people that are like, who is Eggman? I know he fights Shadow. That's his, like, evil doppelganger. That's his black Spider-Man, right? There could be there could be a large number of people that don't know who Eggman is. I don't know. But I feel like nowadays, anyone that comes into the franchise now 100% knows Yeah, Eggman. I'm saying just for the average person who just might have saw this movie randomly, being like, oh, Sonic I think is cool. Like, I know of him. I heard of him. Oh, egg, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure if you heard of Sonic, you have a better chance of hearing about Eggman than you do Shadow. But yeah. Shadow isn't that complicated, I guess, either. To be fair, to be like, it's not like he has like I a mean, huge he backstory. Could be the second <laughs> movie's villain, while they put Eggman on the back burner. You know, I don't know. It all depends on what they want to do with him. Like, what would they do with Eggman? Is he going to have his giant? metropolis zone on a planet he's gonna is he gonna terraform a whole planet I, i've Eggman always liked land? that idea that he turns that I love planet that idea into... can you do that in the second movie right away maybe you do skip it to the third i don't know but i that, that's the thing it's not like they announced oh there's a sonic trilogy coming out this is just a sequel so right. do they have plans for a third i think maybe basic if they... idea Eggman is the villain, ultimate villain, but the actual person that Sonic and Tails fight is Metal Sonic. I think they could just do that. Or they can always make something completely new that hasn't been seen, which I don't know if... I guess I wouldn't care too much. It really depends on what it is. You know what I mean? Uh, Whether or not they just create a whole new bad guy. I mean, Sonic is so unpredictable because of his speed. (laughs) 
Uh, Maybe he's his own worst enemy. <laughs> Maybe he destroys the world. But in, in the first movie, the though, movie here, depressed. Uh, I feel like they got around the whole Sonic is fast and like no one learns how to beat him thing. Like they actually made Eggman smart, <laughs> as mm-hmm. opposed like he's smart in like the cartoons and stuff, but he isn't like so smart that like he doesn't realize like oh if i can just find a way to like keep up with him i probably can beat him because all he's doing is running yeah and i have guns and missiles i mean always same on the same side of that argument though also who is also fast shadow and metal sonic well that's what i'm saying he he makes metal sonic and he's like okay he'll be the exact replica of what sonic is right like but in the but in the first movie he already figured out that like his little uh drone thing his little race uh racer sky racer whatever you want to call it um his speed racer kept up with sonic and he really like he learned from him rather quickly being like okay he's just gonna pause everything and then he you know still chased him and like they you know he almost he beat sonic almost until he got but the power friendship power (laughs) friendship yeah so yeah yep well yes i'm excited for this sonic sequel uh it allows our show to continue. I mean, it always was gonna, but now we actually have a purpose. We don't have to rename it to something else. So, and I'm sure you are excited as well. Because that film is going to be at least two years out, if not maybe three. What have you been uh, catching up on in today's world of cinema? <laughs> um, honestly, I've been playing mostly like Final Fantasy. We're going to cover Mortal Kombat like we were supposed to uh, for this. We'll week. do that next week. Next week. Um, so I, I think that's what I've watched. I'm trying to think, I haven't really like watched anything uh, like specifically. I'm still watching all the Alien movies, but I'm not fully completed. Uh, what movies? The, all the Alien uh, oh, okay. movies. The they're all on HBO Max. Are they? Actually, I lied. Prometheus and Covenant aren't, but the first four. I was going to say I was able to get on uh, the first four on HBO uh, previously. Uh, I had to rent. I no, actually, I bought Prometheus because it was like three dollars more. So I'm like, let me buy this because I I, I actually like really it. like Prometheus. Yeah, so I was like, let me people buy hated it. that film just because it it wasn't called alien i feel like and it didn't show the alien even though i feel like that yeah, was it really hate. wasn't about that but that's the whole other <laughs> i thought that movie was fantastic um i think that's the last yeah so the alien quadril no what was this what is six the sixology what would, what would that be called whatever that uh, is sextology i sextology. think literally uh, yeah um there is a, another one coming too. I'm trying to think, There's the last time we did this, more. what like if anything, because I might have missed. I always forget something like afterwards that I'm like, oh yeah, I watched that. Uh, I meant to play Mortal Kombat, but then I had a 15 gigabyte update because of the aftermath. Right, and then I didn't. We've well, been you playing can talk Apex about it next week, Pit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've been playing yeah. Apex uh, season five. There, it's been fun. I think we're both liking it. They've made some updates with the uh, uh, hit box, not hit boxes, but the hit registration of yes, <laughs> you it's, actually it's, hitting. That, the that's guys. critical for the story of the Apex Legends. Um, but we did find out today that uh, they're at like their the highest it's ever been in terms of player retention rate. So that's exciting. I'm glad that uh, Respawn is getting the uh, yeah. Then they're ten years old now too. Yeah, because I was. Uh, like a week or two ago, yeah. And um, um, the guy who was in charge of Respawn, Vince Simpella, Respawn, by the way, was formed by X Infinity War people that were upset having, about having to work on Call of Duty all the time and certain practices at Infinity War. So they made Respawn ten years ago. Vince Simpella is now, I think, vice president of EA or something crazy like that. He's mm-hmm. up there now. Uh, I feel like Respawn is doing like just and they their have own a second thing. studio now, just for yeah. EA. Yeah, that's awesome. Like that makes that that tells us that like 
we're at least getting Apex for the next year or two, I would hope, um, if not longer. Maybe, who knows? I mean, Battle Royales are still kind of new in the big scheme of things. You know what I mean? Like, Minecraft has cemented itself as, like, a game that there will always be a player base Mm -hmm. that you can go back to, whether it be young young kids or... uh, Old people, you know. I uh, heard it best described, and I'm stealing this this phrasing of it. Um, so you have Fortnite, which is very kid friendly, uh, and it's alienating to a lot of older gamers, especially the Call of Duty crowd, because of how kiddy it is. It looks like, and then you have you know PUBG, which is very like I would honestly consider that like a niche uh, battle royale now, um, just because of how kind of janky it is still, and how like unapproachable it is it's to a more lot of indie right it isn't it's only made by but but it's owned by a gigantic chinese conglomerate so they have the I funding guess. and then there's call of duty black ops fours black zone blackout and then uh call of duty Warzone. those are definitely for the the super casual we play 2k madden and call of duty every year that kind of crowd apex is kind of like the battle royale for the gamer enthusiast type of thing like it's the Halo kind of crowd. It plays a lot it's, like Halo. Like, and I haven't played that much about uh, that much of Halo, but I've played enough to be like energy guns, and energy that kind guns, of stuff and, shields. Yeah. Like, I can't just kill someone by camping. Like, I, I can, but like, it's not as easy as in COD they Warzone. Gotta let you. <laughs> yeah, because in COD Warzone, I've died because I've streamed it a couple times, and I've died like not all the time, but like there'll be a couple frustrating deaths where like. I run into a house, and a guy is just sitting in the corner of the attic. And I'm like, how long are you sitting there? How is that fun to just sit there for 25 minutes for me Can't to walk up there? You kill me. And I'm like, and then you probably don't even win the game because you don't ever encounter anybody. You're right. But Someone's Apex just gonna beat you. punishes you if you try to do that because there's shields and stuff. Like, it, yeah. I, I think it balanced – it. It wasn't like Fortnite. I mean, Fortnite did have shields and stuff, but Fortnite has the building mechanic. That's what makes it unique. And without the building mechanic, you have wide open areas, so it's, yeah, it's a different uh, type of an, an experience. And then PUBG is definitely more of like a janky, but also technical, like CS:GO yeah, it's built shooter off Arma type of. Not saying weird. it's bad, but or anything like that. But uh, but Apex is definitely like she like Halo, kind of almost like a spray and pray at some moments. You know what I mean? Especially when it's like <laughs> the circle's so tight and you're just. I have blue armor. He has purple. I just have to hit him a little bit more. You know what I mean? I still have a chance. You're right. Uh, he might have a better gun than me or whatnot, but I still have a chance kind of thing. But uh, I feel like it's just it's different than all those, and I feel like it it's starting to cement itself, hopefully. It's a game we've continued to play since the beginning of this year uh, pretty yeah. reliably. So, he came back which for is hard for us. Season I, four. He, he called me, man, and I knew it was love at first sight. I've never let my boy down. <laughs> but Because uh, we both but. started playing Apex, what, when it first came out? For like yeah. a month or two, maybe. Yeah, it wasn't until it was like, season sucks. end of season one. Yeah, and then we kind of both left. Oh, season one know. didn't start by the time we left. Yeah. There was no season at first. Okay, I was gonna say that. Uh, I mean, at first Apex, I think part of the reason I didn't like it as much is because I sucked major balls. <laughs> like I just couldn't get kills. Um, but like when we came back, it just took me a little bit. But then I, I the game has slowed down. I think for both of us, and like we have a general sense of how the game works and like if we don't do well we know why or if we do do well like we know why it's not like we're just going in completely blind now and and i feel like if anyone's listening to this who like played it at first and hasn't jumped back in give it a shot it's uh, free it's free to play still and the if whole pc i mean you need to download uh, and i know EA like ea Origin. has this like since star wars battlefront 2 well before that but star wars battlefront 2 at the whole like loot boxes things like Honestly, this like money sucking image of them, but to be honest, they're probably second at the most in terms of actually being like that. Yeah, next um, to act. I was gonna say respawn really. I mean, yeah, it has skins that are like a little pricey in my opinion, but I never have the urge to ever be like, oh, I need this skin, and I or I won't play this game. Like, I right. play it for the the gameplay. I play it to play with you. You know, uh, to get you know we get wins and it's fun. You know, what I mean, it's just fun. And we actually win. Yeah, we actually do win. Unlike Fortnite, where I think I got one or two wins over like two hundred games. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. But no, I just can't talk any more hype uh, about uh, Apex Legends. It's I, fun. 
It's fun. I even got. I've been the playing a lot line. of Apex Legends. You, yeah, that's right. You got that one because uh, there was a big sale. I got both of them, and I want them to do because they just came out with a Pathfinder edition. I want them to make physical versions of that and the uh, the what's his name Octane the yeah. Octane edition, just so that they can be a little cheaper after a few months on Amazon. But I've been playing a lot of Apex Legends with you. Uh, I've also been playing the original Final Fantasy VII, as I've said a few times before. I'm at 85 hours in the game, almost at 90 now, I think, uh, just trying to get the Platinum Trophy on the PS4 version, just, you know, making sure I do, like, everything in that game. And it's been a blast. It's just something where I'll just, like, be grinding on, just farming out uh, materia (laughs) over and over and over again Mm. while I do something else on my phone or watch something. Super fun. Uh, And I've been watching, I've watched a lot of things. Um, I watched... Mission Impossible's four, five, and six <laughs> in like the span of like four days. Ghost Protocol, Rogue Nation, and Fallout. And my God, I've said this to you off off air, but you can't sleep on these films. Like when Fallout came out, I remember a lot of people being like, Why does no one talk about how awesome this is, especially compared to how mediocre the last James Bond film was, Spectre? Like fallout is an an amazing film it is one of the best action films ever it's just awesome tom cruise learned how to fly a helicopter for that movie and he is one of the fastest if not the fastest person to learn he did in like four months like Hmm. he did in preparation for this film 106 halo jumps (laughs) so that they could film it and out of those 106 they got three good takes for that it's oh, insane that's gotta hurt your i mean i guess the more you do it the easier it gets but like i hope you just didn't do that like all in one day because there's no way you can like i don't know about you but one i would they never three skydive, a day but <laughs> they did three a day one oh. in the morning one in the afternoon and then one at like the perfect filming hour between five and six where they're like we need a jump now <laughs> you know it's insane but uh and, and there was a cameraman that did it with them the entire time can we give a as, shout as out well to him, as though? a stunt double for, a, for another shout actor. To that guy. yeah i know i mean and it's crazy too like that dude had an imax camera strapped to his helmet <laughs> and they, they had to invent they had to uh, invent like ways of making sure that since the guy can't see he's you know, it's strapped to his head and he needs to focus on skydiving they invented ways to make sure that tom cruise was always in focus like they literally had gps devices on each other to track the distance between the two of them so that they could have the thing automatically change its focus based off the distance that it was reading off the GPS. Damn. How insane is that? You I was know? just going to say that, uh, imagine bringing that back to like 1940s, like filmmakers <laughs> being like in less than a hundred years, this is what we got to. Like, I know people would be like, Oh, I'd show them CGI. Yeah. I'd show them that too. But just like this, the physical part, like the CGI is all like software, you know what I mean? But that that is incredible. Don't get me wrong. But that stuff, that's still like a human putting his life at risk and also having and the technology shows. to track his life at risk. It shows like the fact that he does his own stunts means that there is no stunt double for him, which means that in the shot where he does the halo jump, he has, he's with uh, Henry Cavill's character. And I think he had a stunt double, um, which is, fine based off how they shot it but like tom cruise he jumps second and they show tom cruise you could see clearly through his his uh, helmet that's tom cruise and then the cameraman walks behind tom cruise all in one take and tom cruise just runs and jumps off the plane and the camera follows him tom cruise is never not shown off screen the whole way through till it lands it was all one take and there's lots of scenes in these mission impossible films where it's Tom Cruise riding the motorcycle. It's Tom Cruise doing the rock climbing. It's Tom Cruise doing this and that. And because it's always him, they don't need to cut, and they can get as many angles of him as they want because they don't have to have the risk of showing the stunt double's face too yeah. close to the camera and for too long because it's always Tom Cruise. It just it it shows, and that's what I appreciate. He's become, and I'm not kidding here, one of my favorite actors just because of the quality of the of the craft he puts into it we can make fun of that mummy trailer that had no audio <laughs> just the sound <laughs> effects of him going ah! 
<laughs> you know what I mean? We can <laughs> we can make was, fun of that. I miss those days, man. Can we go back to that? That we was we can make news, fun too. of that, but like th- that dude jumped out of that plane too. <laughs> 100 percent mission impossible rogue nation opens with him jumping onto an actual airliner plane that's taking off and we watch it take off with no cuts with him hanging onto the outside door <laughs> the whole time <laughs> it it breaks uh whatever uh height it needs to in order to get into the actual air like to actually be okay we're a normal plane now and he's on it the whole time like it's just insane like I appreciate the fuck out of him. They're doing two more of those movies. Um, they're like 2021 and 2022, I think. Mm. And it's going to be nuts. How many are there again? There have been six. Uh, the first one is an, a 1996 classic. It's great. Now, it is based off an old, uh, I think, 70s TV show starring Ethan Hunt. 2000 was uh, John Woo's Mission Impossible 2, which was terrible. 2006 was... Uh, um jj abrams film debut with mission possible 3 mission possible ghost protocol i think was 2011 and that was brad bird's uh live action debut he did a lot of pixar stuff Mm. Uh, and there's a little cameo at the very end of uh that movie a missile is flying towards um i I think san francisco and it's going to hit the pixar building (laughs) So that's his, uh, I mean, they, they don't call out that it's just going to hit San Francisco. It doesn't matter where, but it's in the shot. It's the Pixar building. And then, uh, for five, apparently I forget the director's name, um, but he's done a lot of Tom Cruise stuff since five. He had lunch with Tom Cruise and Tom Cruise just asked him if he wanted to direct the next mission possible. And he jokingly said, yeah, sure. And then Tom Cruise gets on the phone gets off and says yeah okay you're the director now <laughs> so like <laughs> what he because he did the direct he did the jack reacher films too i believe and he did uh fallout so he's he's done the last two and i'm sure he's doing the next two as well like they're just so well done it's legit like how the fuck did i not see these films when they were coming out who didn't tell me that i needed to see these films so i saw those i mean i didn't see them either my dad always showed me like you know, Mission – or not Mission Impossible. Uh, you should feel betrayed. James Bond, you know, all, like he loved those, and I've seen You should feel betrayed because this is a gigantic hole in people's film, uh, especially that first one. For a 1996 spy film, you would think it'd be corny. The gadgets would be super dated. It wouldn't be all that fun to watch, especially with hot action movies now. But that's actually a very good movie. It's a classic. I would consider that a 90s classic for sure. Mm. But – I saw those three films. HBO Max came out yesterday as of this recording, uh, and I haven't been able to get too much hands-on with it. Uh, my first impressions are, like, they build Crunchyroll as one of their main things on there, but there's, like, maybe ten shows on there, so it's not all that interesting. Okay. Um, all of the Studio Ghibli stuff is on there, except, I think, whatever you're the on last PS4, thing you did. you're right? Like, the app? Yeah, I, and I also looked on my phone. Uh, as well, I built out my. I was gonna ask how the list. app ran because I know like Disney Plus for a while. Well, the PS4 first thing... was terrible. Like it would skip frames. We're yeah. actually having issues now with ESPN Plus. Uh, really? Yeah. Uh, we've been watching Peyton's Places, and like we had to stop because all the episodes after a certain point are out of sync. I don't know if it's on ESPN Plus side or like the uploads are out of sync or what. But it's kind of been huh. disappointing because we we're at the tail end of the show, and it's just like. Uh, it's like three seconds ahead. The audio. Uh, yeah. Damn. So I was wondering what HBO Max is like. App is going to be because I'm sure there's well, going to be like kinks before I get to HBO Max. Uh, as of today, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get Disney Plus back for this. They finally fixed the Simpsons. You can actually watch them in four by three now, like in their preserved original quality. Mm. So that's good because when it came out at launch, they were all sixteen by nine. But like some cases, they just like <clears throat> stretched it. They literally stretched it. Some cases they zoomed in. Some case, some cases they like actually zoom zoomed in. Some case, you know, like it was can, inconsistent. So now they're all four by three until they actually were in sixteen by nine with whatever season that was. So I'm gonna go back to that. But the HBO Max app has been good to me so far. I'm sure it's built off of HBO Now's app. I mean, literally, it was HBO Now the app, and then they updated it to HBO Max. So it's not a separate thing technically, but. It's built off that technology for sure. But the first thing I went to go watch 
it told me though we can't play this video right now try again later i'm like oh no <laughs> please don't do this to <laughs> there me. it is yeah but um there's a, a bunch of stuff on there that i built out for my list random things that i didn't realize were on there lots of old turner classic movie stuff um so i'm gonna give a lot there's a lot of westerns on there i'm gonna give those a shot there's a lot of um what's his name the, the one of the original actors he's got the hitler stash all in black and white uh, uh charlie chaplin yeah OG, OG. Yes, they're like a lot of his stuff is on there. So Those are I, all I put, actually good. They still like are funny. In them, I, I put a couple of them on my list. I put a, a few movies I never saw that I always wanted to, like North by Northwest. Never saw that. Yeah, Sometimes. I haven't seen that. But That's I know the that one where really, he, really good. It's the, the famous shot of him running and the plane is 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 flying behind him, chasing him, and like he dives down or something. Famous shot. It's actually the poster too for the movie because they know that's the famous shot. But I watched a. Uh, a couple episodes of a HBO Max original, uh, the Looney Tunes revival, and they're actually they're funny. They're they're not crazy. They're a, they're twelve minute episodes that are actually groupings of two six minute episodes. So they're super bite sized, um, and they're mostly visual gag stuff. I was gonna and say like how close is it to the original? Because like Looney Tunes to me, when I think of Looney Tunes, I just think of like. Bugs Bunny. Cartoon violence. Yeah, just cartoon violence, but Bugs Bunny's like, you know, fits inside a tree and then... His... And outsmarts everyone, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just like... For sure, I mean, the, 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 first, like the first episode, you know, again, pairings of two six-minute episodes, the Bugs Bunny one in that was him just outsmarting Yosemite Sam in an arm wrestling competition with cartoon stuff of, like, he blows his... He, he, blows his arm up with air through his thumb and then pushes the air into Yosemite Sam's arm. And, you know, and like a Bugs Bunny walks on camera, even though he's arm wrestling him, there's two of them. We pan over to Bugs Bunny, we pan back and oh, Yosemite Sam is arm wrestling a stick of dynamite. You know, it's a lot of that kind of cartoon stuff, um, but it's all, it's all visual humor stuff. And I wonder it's how actually... much of that, like, like, I mean, I know it's probably catered to kids, but like, I wonder just, I would like to know the stats of like how many people like you just check that out. You know what I mean? Just yeah. to see. I like... would say it, it's building itself as something that can be timeless. I know that the, um, I don't want to call it a movie poster, but like the icon for it on HBO Max shows Bugs Bunny with a smartphone. <laughs> so, I mean, that I guess dates it to, you know, if we were to come back in 30 years, be like, oh man, he's got that rectangle screen, you know. He doesn't like have how the we VR would... eyes or we'll just have <laughs> yeah. Siri in our eyes. But I mean, it's, it's built, it's, it's kind of shown like, like we're just making Bugs Bunny and Looney Tunes type stuff. I haven't seen Roadrunner yet, so I don't know, man. He might be selling cable subscriptions still, or internet <laughs> through Spectrum. But I watched that, and then I also watched a random movie that was on there that I never saw, but that I always knew about. Say, uh, I almost said Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> we, <laughs> well, you'll hear about that in a couple days, but um, but no, uh, uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. I watched that. Uh, just again, I just made a giant list of HBO Max stuff that I could see on there, and I'm like, I'm just gonna knock one out, maybe one a day, maybe I'll do that. Like this new service came out, I'm gonna use it as much as I can before I jump ship. You know, I don't want to be like, well, I still haven't seen this. And That's what we do HBO. with Showtime. Like you know, I got just... Showtime just to watch Kidding with Jim Carrey there, and and like after we finish that in four days or whatever. Uh, we just watched, like, I just saw, like, I just looked at the movies, and I'm like, oh, this is on here. We yeah. watched that. You know what I mean? Exactly. So I get you. Exactly. Uh, I know um, True Detective uh, is on my HBO Max list because Matthew McConaughey is in season one, and he's my favorite, and I never saw it. So I'm a fake fan. So I'm going to watch that. I'm going to watch a <laughs> bunch of stuff. I know I said last time we gave an update of what we've been watching. I said I was going to watch a samurai classic called Harakiri. <laughs> Haven't seen that yet. <laughs> Uh, but I will. Wow, you're next lying time. to our listeners. I know, I know, I know. There's just so much stuff, man. There's just so much. But I mean, that's just the problem right now. Like, it's weird that like I feel like I have more time now. But it's I... indecision. To but... be honest, it's like it's the classic Netflix problem of like you spend more time blading through than you do watching things or whatever. I mean, not literally, but like, like Where... oh, I don't really want to watch. They should any add. Of these. Uh, they should add a feature. That you, you press you. a button, it just randomly gives you something. It doesn't even like, and maybe you can pick like a genre. Be like, give me a drama TV show, and like, boom, it gives you a 
keeping up with the Kardashians. And you're like, okay, I'm here. And, then, and you're like, oh, you don't this, like yeah. this? Skip it. And then it gives you something else. You know what I mean? But it's it's like Pandora or some sort of free music service where it gives you so <laughs> many skips. Uh, or like that idea, but like, you know, like I said, you I built out my HBO Max list. Make me watch something at random on here. Because none of them are like, I want to watch this 100%. They're all like... I should watch these, and I'm interested. These are I looked through the entire catalog of an HBO Max, everything that's available, and I just put the, these on my list. Yeah, half so of my make Netflix me, make me watch something random. Half of our Netflix uh, list is just like, oh, that looks cool, and then, like we never touch it until like months yeah. later. Like I have Dracula on there, the I think the one that the BBC produced uh, okay. that I heard that's was really starring, good. Uh, is that starring Christopher Lee? No, that no, I'm saying like this is recent like just it's oh. a tv series mini series that came out I in gotcha. the uk but came to america under uh netflix and like i think it's like six episodes but they're super long uh i could be wrong but uh i saw it on there and like watched the trailer i'm like oh that's cool but mm. i'm also not really into horror movies right now like i i get my horror movie horror movies on like september october november like that's my halloween time uh because brent and i will always watch uh We'll always watch. We have like a list. I'll have a list of movies that we both haven't seen. We'll just try to knock out old and new. Um, when we get closer, I'll maybe I'll share it with uh, the cast here. The definitive Sonic movie show Halloween watch list. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I didn't say there's a lot of classic horror stuff on HBO Max. Stuff like The Blob. Oh, I haven't seen that. that a lot time. of that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I I just don't want to be stuck with indecision. So I made my list. They're all things that I'm willing to sit down and watch. Maybe I have to have my phone out for some of it. Maybe I need to be eating. Maybe I need to be doing something while I'm watching it. But I'm going to be trying to watch one thing a day if it kills me. (laughs) (laughs) That's me with Final Fantasy right now. I'm like, during my lunch, I'm like, I don't know how much I can accomplish in like 20 minutes. And I'm like, I beat the Hell House in 20 minutes. All right. So you're a good chunk into the game. I don't want to tell you how far you in, how far you are in. Yeah, I'm around 16 it, hours right now, 17. So I, my goal, uh, I've told you this off there, but my goal is to finish it before June 19th when uh, Last of Us come out comes out because mm. I want to at least get the heavy hitters that I know are going to be the heavy hitters, and I want to be, I want to finally be able to like be up on the up. Yeah, Grant I might not be there like when you're finished or when most people are finished, but like I don't want it to be like. Six months later, like I did it, I beat Last of Us Part Two, <laughs> yeah. guys. Don't you worry. Uh, wow, that's that gonna ending. Be us with Death Stranding. Yeah, uh, you know we finally finished that. So, and if I'm good, if, if if I'm lucky, if I'm real lucky, maybe Ghost of Tsushima. I don't know. Because I, I would July. love to, but number one, Paper Mario and the Origami King comes out the same day. And number two, that's an open world game, and I know I have not been good to open world games that have come <laughs> out this say. generation. So I don't want to buy that day one for sixty bucks when I could, you know, use the money yeah, on something you. else. There's and also I, a show I'm not going to get that it. Comes out, I think when uh, is that July? Mm, I need to pre-order that. Is I that got July? back into pre-ordering video games. I think you're right. Because I'm going to say maybe I could do that and like just have uh, my childhood if it has back the for co-op. A bit. We could do the co-op. I wonder what the trophy list on that is. I would imagine it just beat everything. Like it, I mean, they didn't have trophies I know, on PS2, but like right. back in but, the day, I did everything. But the PS2 versions of those games, as well as a lot of THQ games, are on PS4, and they have trophies. And playing through uh, Destroy Humans 2 on PS4, the trophy list is pretty straightforward. It's kind of just yeah, do everything. everything. <laughs> you know, Which I is mean? what I did do on PS2. Same. I remember spending... So many times, so many hours, rather, trying to find the one last red dot on the mini map in the London the bridge. map. It was fucking underground in the underground tunnel section. Yeah, and then getting onto some help forum years later. When I guess I think it was for the trophy list, uh, PSNProfiles.com. I think there was a forum on there being like, "All right, I'm missing this one thing. I don't see it anywhere." It's 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 in the I forget what they call their London version of London, but I'm like I was the first person to be like, "Did you go underground and check under there?" <laughs> this is a 2006 me writing this because <laughs> I had the same issue. Mm. But I want to platinum more stuff. 
I already kind of planned out. Final Fantasy VII is going to be my number 70th Platinum. Uh, and then the remake is going to be my 75th. And I think I have four games in between. I think I have them lined up. Medieval is going to be one of them. I am going to finish. I am going to play Medieval after I finish Seven Original. Uh, Good luck. I'm, I'm I don't gonna... know if you're going to want to stick around through that game. I just don't think you're going to like it after yeah. a while. Well, I guess we'll find out. But I know your drive for Platinum Trophies could overpower you and uh, take control. It also has burned me out in the past. Uh <laughs> I wow. all I want to do is be able to say I finished this game, and I want to be able at the end of this year be like, yeah, I I can I say this is my game of the year because I actually did play it, <laughs> or you know what I mean? You know, I, I just want to be able to say that I played the big ones. Like I'm not, you, I might miss the indie game remake. here and there, but whatever. Like I did the Sony exclusives. You know what I mean? Yeah. What came out this year before Final Fantasy? That was big. Uh. Not Death Stranding, because that was late. That was last year. Last year. Um, and it doesn't have to be a Sony thing. It can be anywhere. I was just trying to think. That's like the first thing that came to my mind. Um, not a whole lot, right? Because a lot of stuff got delayed and pushed. There was, wasn't there something in February? Or was that supposed to be Last of Us, and then it got pushed? Last of Us was supposed to be February. Then it got pushed to May. Because there, there, there is definitely something that we're missing that I'm just not... It was something early, like super early this year, that we just are not remembering. Oh, apparently it wasn't big enough, important enough for us. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, because it's Final Fantasy, Animal uh, Crossing, a- yes, Animal Crossing, uh, Last of Us, Ghost of Shu- Tsushima. Um, I know later in the year we're getting uh, Cyberpunk. I know we're getting Avengers. I still don't know if what I'm going to do with I that. I want to play the like real bad. But I don't know if I'm gonna. I don't PC. think I will. I don't know. Will I PC that, or do I PlayStation that and probably not play it? <laughs> I'm thinking I want to play it, but I know like for that kind of game because it is open world and probably I'm guessing it's gonna be as big as like Witcher Three was, which I didn't play, but I know is like you could put a hundred, two hundred hours in that thing. You know, what I, I didn't mean? get very far in Witcher. <laughs> That's what makes me apprehensive about a lot of these. Open what world I might do is where I'm kind of interested. Is I might stream it because then they'll. Like, I'm already going to be streaming, so, like, I know I'll get four hours, you know, every Wednesday or Saturday that I do it. I think that might be my best bet. Yeah. My only thing is, like, with these kind of games, how much uh, I want a uh, chat to be there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because sometimes I like to just... You don't want chat for Last of Us, that's for sure. And yeah, exactly. And you want it for Cyberpunk. It all depends. Uh, do you really want because an open world game like that do you want people backseat telling you where to go <laughs> you know what i mean yeah telling you made the wrong decision but at the same time like if that happens you just kind of like tell them like no go away uh but also we don't know a huge chunk of the games coming out this year because they're gonna be playstation 5 and xbox series x launch games you know yeah like apparently so wait, what day is today is the 28th of may yep. yeah yeah uh wednesday june 3rd apparently is going to be this is rumors uh play sony's playstation 5 games reveal oh my god they're not going to talk about the hardware but they're going to be apparently talking about a lot of the games that are coming out at launch so and i would imagine that would include actual footage of do you want more info on games or do you want like or do you want more info on hardware or not hardware but what it looks like like if you could only let's say this here's your Monkey's uh, what if time. monkey's paw i guess yeah um sonic's clubbed paw you can either get right now you either know what the playstation looks like or what what games you're getting but whatever whatever one you pick you don't get the other one until it comes out <laughs> well then i would rather know about the games <laughs> okay so you'd For rather sure. okay because i part, we already part know what the know hardware what can like. do we need, just need to see it like, yeah, I want to know what it looks like for sure. I'm sure it's going to be that two-toned white and black like the controller for sure. I it's like also, vi- watch it be like vibrant green, just like goofy as hell, just ugly. <laughs> That's my uh, fear. Like is the, it's gonna one be of the ugly, original Xbox like pitches, one of the original Xbox uh, prototypes was vibrant translucent green. Um, I would like to, honestly, the collector in me wants to know what the packaging on the physical discs and cases are. This is going to sound weird, but I have a feeling that, you know, PS3, it was, and PSP, 
it was a, a translucent but kind of whitish shade because you needed to have some sort of translucent with you know black banners. PS4 was translucent blue with white text. I almost think it's going to be uh, non-translucent white with blue text. I almost think that's what's the what that's what the. Uh, you think they'll make the game smaller or like the cases smaller? I don't know. They still run on Blu-rays, and Blu-rays have a distinct case size. I don't know if that's due to the format itself. Because I'm like, I look at the that, Switch or... ones, and I'm like, uh, even though I like the PlayStation ones, I'm just like, as a someone who cares about the environment, I'm like, do we need them to be this big? No, we don't. Retailers need them to be that big. But then that goes to the whole catching. digital versus physical thing. Yeah. What if PlayStation comes on like, hey, sorry only digital now that would be interesting because they it, ps5 does have a disc drive um for 4k ultra hd Not saying it's gonna happen but yeah um and they said the reason why it's like that when asked if it's if ps5 is going to be all digital they said no because it's uh, backwards compatible with ps4 they need to be able to have that i don't think they necessarily said that ps5 games are going to be physical at all <laughs> but i imagine they would be because there's always um, people don't who don't your, have your retail partners. Granted, it's hard. I don't think you can really buy single player games anymore that don't have some sort of installation Updates. that you need to do through the internet. But like, there's always people out there who don't have access to the internet and might buy a PS4, PS5 because it plays, you know, uh, Blu-ray or whatever. And because you can't, yeah, I was gonna say though, you can't really put a disc in anymore and just plug and play. Sadly. Yeah, well, I mean, you can if if your thing is not connected to the internet, it will play the disc. But sometimes it might not be complete. Uh, I know Final Fantasy fifteen, the day one edition, you know, with no patches or any. Well, it had a day one patch, but like if you played off the disc on day one with no internet, it was almost incomplete. Mm. Like a lot of stuff was literally patched in. So yeah, I mean, it all depends. I know. Um, in some cases, they'll actually delay the game so that the day one patch is almost non-existent. But, I don't know. It's always a sliding scale of game development. There's never a, we fixed all the bugs. It's just, what bugs are we okay with leaving? Because we need to ship the game on time. And that's true, apparently, for every every game. But Yeah. Let's wrap this up I was with gonna a say uh, return of our new favorite segment. Uh, our official uh, audiobook... <laughs> I guess our, our our read along of the Sonic the Hedgehog the movie official movie novelization. We did chapters one and two already, so we're going to do chapter three. And uh, just like last time, I'm going to be the narrator, and Devin is going to be all of the voices. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like last time, although I don't think that this chapter does it, anything in quotations is a thought, and therefore is your line. Are you ready? Yep, page uh, page 27, right? Yep. Yep. <clears throat> chapter 3. I wish they had chapter titles. Chapter 3, The Return of the King. <laughs> the Reckoning. The Reckoning. <laughs> it was a rush, a thrill, a rocket ride to the other side and back again, even if it only lasted for a second. Sonic could get close to these people. He saw how they lived. He heard what they said. And sometimes, just for a second, he reached out and took part of their world with him. Then, with a screech of his feet, he was gone, and no one ever saw. That's how fast he was. Another day, another flawless run. He told himself while trying to get a better grip on today's haul. Way past cool. He roared up through the hills and hit the entrance to the cave at top speed. Bouncing around the room, Sonic started to feel a charred shiver up his blue quills, and then the heat of his red sneakers as they skipped across the stalactites. Even with the electric trail of his oversized hedgehog body traced when he <laughs> wow, went at okay. full blast, he'd never been caught. Gotta find a new challenge to keep the old feet sharp, Sonic. He said to himself, being undefeated was getting boring. Occasionally he thought it'd be good to be noticed, to talk to someone again, but that was impossible. Years ago, Sonic made a promise to never be seen by a human, but that didn't mean he couldn't push that promise to the very edge. Sonic skidded to a stop and unloaded a few bags of chips, a black, a pair of black sunglasses, and a handful of change onto a crooked shelf with the rest of his collection. 
It joined his stack of near mint condition speed demon comics, the lone ping pong paddle he used to win the all time hedgehog versus self championship, and of course his old school boombox. Sonic cranked up his favorite song, a lightning quick beat accompanied by wailing guitars. He kicked and screamed and danced across the rest of his makeshift home. The music echoed off posters of all the places he wanted to run to but could never risk going to. Sonic wished he could shove it in the face of, in gravity's face by running up the Eiffel Tower. He wanted to ricochet off the Pyramid of Egypt like a pinball or a dash the length of China's Great Wall in the heartbeat. He had to settle for solo jams in the caves of Green Hills. At least they had good chili dogs here. Mm. Sonic struck the big note on his air guitar and slid up to, onto the dresser. Up on top, a gnarled old sack of sh- a gnarled old sack shook loose and landed on Sonic's head. Ouch! He gripped his head and squeezed his eyes shut. And when Sonic opened them, he stared at what had spilled out of the sack. The rings. Long claws, last rings. He almost never took them out anymore. He'd been here on Earth for so long, the thought of warping to a stinky mushroom planet seemed insane. He was lonely here, sure, but he was hardly alone. And last there were at least there were people all around him whose lives were like a movie he could control. Sonic was a living fast forward button. Take Crazy Carl prowling his property every night and snapped. Take old Crazy Carl, Carl prowling his property every night and snapping bear traps open just to catch the alien life form he knew was out of reach. That guy was a riot. Whoosh! Sonic would blow past like a gust of wind behind him and set off every trap in sight. Kashink, kashink! They'd snap off like popcorn. I know you're here. Carl would howl. Carl would howl and stomp around wildly. I know you're real. No, I'm not. Sonic would call back as he blasted into the hillside. Such good times they had. But no one kept Sonic's attention like Donut Lord, Green Hill's one-man action force. The affellable, pastry-eating do-gooder was the best of what the town had to offer. Dedicated to justice, friendly with everyone, ready for anything. And there was his animal-loving yoga expert wife. Sonic called her Pretzel Lady because of how she could bend, but it seemed like the kind of person just flexible enough to see he wasn't a danger. The kind of person Longclaw had never guessed would live on Earth. Sonic almost felt bad when he zipped through their lives at super speed, leaving only a trail of weirdness behind him. Dun, dun, that was the dun. end of chapter three. I need to turn the lights on more when I read because I could barely see some of the words. <laughs> I feel like I skipped <laughs> some of them. I didn't have many, uh, you know, quotes this week. I was surprised. That was a good chapter. That was a good chapter for how long this episode went. <laughs> Well, uh, you'll stay tuned to the next episode, or maybe two episodes from now, maybe. Next uh, Sonic movie show, where we might bring back this topic again for Chapter 4 of the official movie novelization. I feel like this was a good episode. Uh, and just like the rest of our episodes, this one can be found <laughs> on multiple podcast services, oh. like such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google somehow, somewhere, YouTube, Stitcher, Pocket Cast maybe other places i should write these down to be honest but we're on the main ones um this show is sonic movie show you can find it there i know as of this recording or a couple of days out from the next episode of the chronicles of diesel our monthly jaunt through uh vin diesel's filmography catch that out there on the same feed you're listening to this episode and when you're done listening to the episode why don't you go ahead and head on to a website known as twitter where someone or somewhere might be trying to change it because he's afraid that he's being censored uh we the show can be followed there at sonic movie show my name was ethan you can find me on twitter at ethan absolutely uh devin over here could be followed on twitter at c-u-r-s-o-n-a youtube and let us know what you thought about the sonic movie sequel news do you think it's going to go in wildly different directions than the first movie did do you think they're going to take it risky do you think they're just going to do the same thing again let us know do you even want a sequel that is a question i feel like anyone ask. listening to this would want a sequel but that is a fair point do you think this is like the original last of us game a game that was so perfect in the eyes of many that they didn't want a sequel too bad you're getting one <laughs> let us know and uh, we'll catch you next week see ya